All right. Well, welcome back. So today we have gone. We've gone over. Um, I said B killer. I've said released that video today, but uh, a couple weeks ago I also released the NTLM relay video, right? But then I thought, hey, what stop us from using SMB Killer with NTLM Relay? So I went ahead and I cloned a Windows machine here. So we have a couple Windows machines up, right? We got this guy right here. And we have another one sitting right over here. So we got two Windows machines sitting up, right? Let's go ahead and let's use SMB Killer again. And I'm going to go ahead and delete these files like right here. Not through that. We're going to delete those guys. And what we're going to do is we are going to... Uh, Do this for all current continue there we go okay and what we're going to do is we're going to make that smb killer again right we're doc we're going to close our responder and uh we're going to kind of just uh we're going to utilize our ntl relay up here so that should be good like right there all right cali cool whatever we'll exit off here all right or control c whatever okay Let's go ahead and we'll run a who am I slash all up here. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And we'll hop over into that Windows machine, right? Wherever that's at. All right, welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at NTLM Relay, which we've talked about before, with SMB Killer, all right, which we've also released a video on before. So if I type in SMB Killer, right, that's going to put those files in that SMB. And I thought to myself, well, what's stopping us from utilizing SMB Killer to be able to do an NTLM Relay, right? So let's go ahead and hit Enter on NTLM Relay, and then let's go ahead and start up this SMB Killer, and there we go. It already worked, actually. Okay, the responder is going to start. Obviously, port 445 is not going to work because we already have it up and right up here. We just go ahead and stop responder. But as we can see, we utilized the SMB killer. It immediately got our NTLM relay to work, right? Inside of our targets, we have two Windows machines. So here's one. Here's the other one. Okay, the files went into this Windows machine like right here on that share. Now, remember, uh, if you've never watched my NTLM relay video, Go ahead and give that a watch because that will tell you how everything works. But as we can see, we are calling to another machine. We're calling to 192.168.11.169 and running who am I slash all. And there we go. That's who we are like right there. Okay. For that other machine. All right. Now let's say we want to get, let's try to grab a, um, what's to stop us from doing something like make directory C temp. Um, and then let's try, um, let's go ahead and do a wget. Uh, we may have to do a PowerShell taxi. I don't know. PowerShell taxi. And we'll say uh, wget. And let's go ahead and throw our IP address in there. Right. And I'm going to try wget etc64 and call back to me. That's what's going to be my goal like right here. In case you're wondering what we're doing. wget that like right there. We'll do HTTP. slash edc 64exe tac o uh, c temp right edc64.exe all right and then let's try to make a call back to us with a edc 64exe uh, tac e command prompt for RIP address, op port, let's say 445, right? 445. All right. Let's go ahead and start up a Python 3. Actually, maybe I want to do port 445 just because then we're going to have problems. Let's say 443. All right. Because then we're going to have problems at TLM Relay, correct? And the SMB killer also. And let's go ahead and also start up a listener on port 443. And from here... Let's go ahead and let's um, go back to those files. Go ahead and start this guy real quick. Now, he may not be able to do some things right, uh, such as in like, 
uh, address already in loose, so like the HTTP server, right? You may not be able to do something like that, right? So let's go ahead and let's head back over to that Windows machine again. And let's see if we can't press back and forward again. May have to put out like different ports, stuff like that. But we're about to find out, right? All right, this time it doesn't look like it wants to work. All right, let's go ahead and put this on a different port. Let's go ahead and stop that command. And we'll say port 8080, maybe. Uh, port 8080. And let's go ahead and do a Python 3 on port 8080. Let's go ahead and start that up. And let's see if we get anything this time. Because that would be pretty cool, I feel like. If we could actually get this to work like right here. Press back forward. State is execute the specified command. Right. But we're not getting a callback to actually do anything, right? So let's go ahead and stop that and let's just try let's try a quick dir in the c drive and let's see if it actually made that c tab maybe you can't add in more than one right command at a time right let's go ahead and delete all this i think we did something like this before right where we actually called for another command where we actually got something back right i feel like we did something like that before and i wanted to do oh i just did dir huh? not dirc Let's go ahead and look at the C drive there. We'll try that again. Let's actually actually do something like this, right? Boom, boom. Okay. And let's see if we can't. Let's make sure that everything, yep, everything still looks good down there. All right, so we can just kind of back forward. All right, uh, doesn't look like it actually made that program yet, right? Don't know why that just happened. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and try that one more time where we do a make directory. C temp back forward. Uh, it says execute the specified command. Oh, Pockets is executed on um, 192.168.11.169, right? So we probably want to be actually looking at 169 also on here. So let's go ahead and see how 169 is doing. Actually, let's just go ahead and we'll do another C drive or DIR and C. And there's our temp directory. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and do a maybe a PowerShell tax C for a command write. Uh, w get HTTP RIP address, which I already forgot it. We can grab that again. RIP address. Uh, we'll do port 8080. Slash NC64 dot exe. Now, obviously, actually, right down here, NC64 does actually exist. So let's go into tools, and then we'll start up another website. Web server on uh, port 8080 Taco C temp NC64 64. Whoa, whoa, there we go. Sorry, it's dark in this room. Dot exe. And we'll go ahead and we'll close that off. Let's go ahead and start that up. Back forward. Okay, so pulls the XU command. We do see that it did come back and grab something from us, right? Now let's try to execute our last command, which was to do a NC C tab. C tab NC64.exe. Uh, tacky command. And that's going to be for our IP address, right? Boom. Uh, port 443, correct? We'll press back then forward again. And we do get a callback IP config. And we can see that we are on 11.169, like right now, without ever actually um, doing everything to what well, we did a lot of stuff to 11.169. But with utilizing an NTLM relay to get to over to 11.169, right? And we were able to do all that. So that's NTLM Relay. We do have a whole video on it, but that's NTLM Relay utilizing SMB Killer. Combine those two together and actually uh, running, you know, different things 
to be able to pretty much grab a shell on another target system. So if you guys enjoyed it, and I will talk to you all later. You all thought the video was over, but it's not. All right. So I just figured something out. If we call for a PowerShell taxi at the very beginning, right? So we tell PowerShell to write command. Let's just put a bunch of crap in here. Let's put HHHH. Okay, so we're going to make directory HHHH. We're calling back on NC64. And we're going to say, hey, I want to then execute that uh, NC64 and bring it back to here, right? So let's go ahead and run that. So we're calling for PowerShell. Tell it to run a command. Make directory C 4Hs. Um, we can look at that directory, okay, for whatever. We don't even actually need that product right there. We go ahead and delete that. All right. There we go. Then we're going to wget, use that 8080, right, for NC64. Then from there, we're going to make an out file and calling for and, and saving it as NC64 within that directory that we made. Then from there, we're going to call for NC64 command prompt coming back to my IP address on port 443. Now let's go ahead and run this again over here. So we're going to back out. We'll forward again. And there we go. Who am I? And I'm NC System Authority on the other IP address of 192.168.11.169. Well, we called for everything on the IP address. Of 192.168.10.113. As you can see, we are controlling that. And then from there, we're then attacking the target over here. Right? So it's technically, technically what we could do is we could try to make a Python script that would automate this process, make a directory, and then run on a random port maybe between you know, 4444 and 5555. And as more computers start to log on and things like that, we go into the share, we could technically try to get access to a bunch of computers all at the same time. And then that point that script would obviously have to start netcat on all those different randomly generated ports. But that is what they, that'll be, uh, we'll try to work on something like that later on. But that is where we are at right now. All right, y'all have a good one and I will talk to you all later.